Hi everyone. So we are able to now send our sign up and login requests from the React app to the backend. But we're not doing anything with that token and with that data thereafter. And one of the important reasons for not doing anything is of course that we have no logic to create events or do bookings and so on. So we'll take our next steps towards that goal and make sure that our UI changes a little bit when we are logged in and when we are not logged in in this video. So let's start with the UI maybe. Um, how can we determine whether we are logged in or not? Well, we got this token which we get when we log in, right? So let's use that token and store it somewhere in our application and change other parts of the UI uh, based on that. Now, in off JS here, we do get our token effectively here in the then block after logging in, not for signing up, but for logging in. So in the end, our goal will be, will be to store the token somewhere so that we can use it in other parts of the application too, like in our main navigation, which we in the end send up here, set up here in app.js, there. Now, how can we get data from inside a route, like our off route, where we effectively get the token, into that main navigation? Well, we could use Redux for that, but we can also use something which is built into React, which is the context API. And that is exactly what I want to use here. I'll create a new folder, context here, and in there I'll add my off context.js file. Now, how do we create this context and how does it work? Well, context in the end is something which you can think of as a storage we can set up in the React app, which we can then access from anywhere in our component tree. So instead of passing props around manually across all levels, we can basically use the context as a central storage to bypass our entire element or component tree um, and just get the data in the places where we need them. Therefore, here I will export a default React create context result, which is basically a uh, context object and of course, for that to be available, I need to import React from React. Now, create context here then also takes a default value. And this could also just be a number or um, could be a string, but here it will be a JavaScript object. And in there, I'll have a token uh, field, which by default will be an empty uh, string or null even. And I will have a login method, which here is just an empty method that's, uh, that does nothing, but adding it here will help us with auto-completion later. And I'll do the same for a logout. So I got a token, a login and a logout, and actually I also want to have my user ID in here, which is also null initially. Now we export this context, so now we can import it into other files, and we want to import into that file, which is the the highest, uh, at the highest level of where we wanna use that context. We can then access the context from all, all child components, but not from any higher components. In my case, it would be the app.js, and I wanna wrap the main navigation and the entire main block here with the same context, so that anywhere in these wrapped elements, we can access that context. Now, what do I mean with wrap? Well, let's first of all import our context, and then it will be uh, clearer. I'll have my off context and you can name this however you want because it's a default export and I'll get this from my context folder and there the off context file and let's now use that like a normal JSX element but actually not off context itself but it does have a consumer and a provider and here we need the provider and now we wrap this around all elements where we want to be able to use that context. So in my case, that would be these elements. So now anywhere in there and in their children, we can now access this context. And we can do this conveniently, for example, in off.js, since it's a class-based uh, component, with the static context type. We can add static context type here. So a static property and set this equal to, and now import our context again, off context from context, off context. 
We can now set this property equal to off context. And behind the scenes, React will make the connection and will now give us access to our context data. So basically to this default data, data right now in a this context property. So now anywhere in here, we can access this context. For example, here, in this then block here, I wanna check if this state is login. So if we are logging in, then I know that this response will have a token. Alternatively, I can also of course check rest data if it has a token property, because we know it will have a data field, a login field, and then a token field. So we could say rest data, does it have a data and then a login and a token field? If it does have, we know we can set this. We can now access this context, which again is now a property given to us by React, which will have essentially everything our off context data has. So here we set this equal to off context. In off context, we have login, logout, token, user ID. So now I can call down there this context login. And now let's say there I want to forward res data, data login token, and res data, data login user ID. I want to forward these two fields here, token and user ID, and maybe also our res data, data login token expiration field. So basically all three fields are now forwarded here. And of course you would be correct if you now think, what would this do? Because in off context, these methods don't do anything. Well, we can add the arguments we expect to get. So the arguments I'm passing here, token user ID and token expiration. We can add that here, user ID, token expiration. But of course we still don't do anything. And we won't write the logic for the login function here. I just do this so that I can get better auto completion and IDE support later. What I'm really interested in is the place where we initialize this context in the app.js file. Because provider here also takes a value. And this value allows us to set the current value of this context, which is then distributed down to all the children who are interested. Now that means that here, I can now set well all the values which this context has. So all the fields which my off context here has. So token user ID and the two methods can be set here. Now I will set token here to an empty string still or to null initially. And I will set user ID here to null. But I can now also bind my methods to methods which I add here. And there I will add a login method which gets a token, a user ID and the token expiration. And which then can do something with it. Oops, let's write it as an arrow function. And we can also add a logout method, which right now doesn't do anything, but which will soon do so. And now we can bind the login field in our context value here to the this login method. And suddenly when we call login from anywhere in our component tree, it's this global login method, which will be called. And the same of course for logout, we can call this logout here. Now the interesting part is that we can now manage our good old state in this class here, just as we always did, totally unrelated to the context in general. And there we can manage the token, set this to null, and the user ID and set this to null, for example. And here in login in this method, we can now call this set state and set, whoops, not login, and set token to the token we get as an argument and the same for the user ID. And I'll take care about the token expiration at a later point of time. Now this allows us to call something on our context and implicitly call this method, which then in turn changes the state of this class. And now we can use that same state to manipulate the context value, which is then passed down to all children again. So here we can set this token to this state token and the user ID to this state user ID. I hope you can now see that circle of how we can now use this state managed in app.js and make it globally available in all child components through the context. And in logout, we would call this set state 
and simply set token to null and user ID to null. Now with that, we have a way of managing our data here. Now in main navigation, which important, is a child of our context provider, we can access this context. Now, this here is a, a functional component, and therefore this static context type thing won't work here. But that won't be a problem, because A, we could of course pass our data with normal props um, in app.js, main navigation is a direct child, so we could add a token or a is off prop and pass it down, and that would be an absolutely fine approach. But B, just to practice this context thing a bit more, we can also just import our off context here. Whoops, from context off context and use a different form of that API. We can now use the consumer. Now consumer is also a JSX element. And this actually then gives us a function which we call or which we pass as a child here. And in this function result, we return the JSX code which we actually want to render like this. And now this function will receive our context value essentially. That is how it works. So here this context will have access to all these context fields we used before like token and so on. And therefore we can use that to for example only render this list item here, authenticate, if we can authenticate. So if we are not logged in, only if it makes sense. So we can use that syntax here and check context token. And if that exists, then we'll render this list item, otherwise it will not be rendered. And on the same page, I will only render events in booking, let's say, if we are um, actually logged in. Or let me quickly check here uh, on the back end. I think we actually have an events route which we can use without being authenticated. Yes, this one. So actually, I'll revert this. Um, events is always rendered, but bookings is not. So here, bookings, this will only be rendered if the token is set. And here I have an error. Authenticate is only rendered if it is not set. So now I'm using that token here. And if I save all of that now, you already see we have authenticated events here. If I do now log in, which should give us a token, this changes. Now I'm still on the authentication page because I haven't added logic to redirect, but this works, that is great. And if I reload, we'll lose our state and therefore we'll lose, we lose the token and I'm locked out again. And we can persist the session by storing the token in local storage and so on, but I'll not do this for now. Now, of course it would be nice to get redirected as well. And in general on app.js, we shouldn't be able to reach all the routes as a default. And I don't want to redirect to off all the time, only if I'm not authenticated. The good thing is, since we use routing here just as normal JSX elements, and in app.js, we of course have access to state token. We don't even need the context here. We can of course render different route configurations based on our state. So for example here, this redirect route, this only makes sense if we are not logged in. So I will check if this state token is set and only if it is not set, indicated by that exclamation mark, I will render this. So this redirection will only kick in if we are um, not logged in. Now, this off page here should only be reachable if this state token is not set, of course. Otherwise, we don't need to sign in because we already are. And bookings here on the other hand should only be reachable if the token is set. So just as the navigation item should only be rendered then, the route should only be reachable in this case. I also want to redirect the user from off to um, our events page, let's say, and also from slash to the events page if we are authenticated. So I can duplicate these, this redirection here and redirect from slash to events if we do have a token and also if we do have a token and of course therefore we can also uh, theoretically group that but I'll do it one by one to make it really clear to understand. So if we do have a token then I don't only want to redirect from uh, slash to events but also from 
off to events, let's say. Now let's save all of that. And let's try this again. Let's log in here. And I get redirected to the events page. And if I now try to go to slash nothing, um, I get redirected to off because this reloads the page and therefore um, we get uh, to this page again. But we can see that once I do log in, we automatically get redirected to events as we should. So our routing setup should now work. The navigation bar now also behaves correctly and therefore we are now starting to use our authentication data. We are starting to use that token in the React application. And that is a, a default pattern you would use for rendering the different parts depending on your user authentication state. Obviously you can get more sophisticated than that, but this is a great start. Now with that, we got everything prepared to finally start working on the events page here and create events and render events and later also book events in the next videos.